think you have what it takes to crack these hardest riddles? Each question is a test of your logic and intuition, including your problem-solving skills. Share in the comments the number of your right answers. Let's go. You're a fast and furious racer on a tropical island. You find a new motorbike online and call the salesman to arrange a test drive. Later that day, you arrive at the meeting point and see two guys with two identical motorbikes. One of them is the seller you spoke with, and the other one is a scammer who wants to sell you a stolen vehicle. Who's deceiving you? Think carefully and feel free to leave your answer in the comments. The salesman text message has the logo of his motorcycle store. The guy on the right has a baseball hat with the same logo. Therefore, he must be the store's official representative. Therefore, the guy on the left is a scammer. Congrats! The motorbike is now yours. You hit the road and you make your way across the pier. Suddenly, you spot three people. Whom will you save first? Let us know in the comments! The teen is playing with a rattlesnake, which looks pretty dangerous. But luckily, it's not real, see? It has a barcode on the side, so it's just a toy. The lady is about to jump into the sea infested with sharks. But look carefully, she's just posing. Her boyfriend is filming a video. He's the only one who needs to be saved here because he's standing on rotten old wood. It's about to collapse so he risks ending up swimming with sharks for real. You save the day and continue your ride. Oh no! The main road is closed for repairs. So you only have three options to return to your bungalow. The first route is the notorious mountain spiral road known for its rockfalls. The second road is flat but it leads through a jungle inhabited by crocodiles. And the third road is half flooded because it lies through the old cursed swamp. Which way will you choose to stay alive? Don't forget to share your answer in the comments section below. Take a closer look at the second route. The sign says Crocodile Farm. This means that the crocs are kept indoors under supervision. So this is the safest choice. You take the second route and decide to visit the crocodile farm. Let's see how eagle-eyed you are. Who's in danger here? Write it down in the comments faster than the other bright side detectives. This tourist has crossed the barrier. The tourist's name is Mimi. You help her get out of the barrier safely, but in the process, she scratches her leg. So you bring Mimi to the local hospital. Can you spot anything suspicious here? If you nailed it, please share your answer. Easy peasy. The windshield of this ambulance car is covered with white paint. You enter the building and face three surgeons in the lobby. Which doctor is dangerous? Don't let the imposter get away. Share your suspicions. The first doctor is sleeping, but maybe she's just tired after a long shift. The second lady doesn't wear any gloves, but it's not a crime. She's having a coffee break. Meanwhile, the third lady's nails are too long and fancy for a surgeon's work. And she brought an open medical syringe to the lobby, which is not very hygienic. The doctor takes Mimi away. You decide to have a walk around the hospital and face the following scene. Two greatest enemies, Gia and Kai, wake up simultaneously in a hospital room. Both immediately grab the scissors and try to cut each other's IV drips. Who's more likely to survive? Think carefully and tell us your answer in the comments.
someone whose drip is cut farther away from the arm has a better chance of surviving. This way, more medicine will manage to get into the body, and our hero will win extra time before the doctors arrive. So it's likely going to be Gia. You're starving, so you go to the local food court. Too late, it's already closed. Oh look, this kiosk is still working. There are three burgers left to choose from, but only one of them is safe to eat. Hit the like button if you can spot any poisoned food right away. The first burger was cooked five days ago, according to its tag. Um, no, thank you. The third one was prepared today, but there's a fly sitting on the meat. Flies can spread diseases. Only the second burger, which is packed in cling film, is a safe option. Does anyone have a better answer? Feel free to share! The next day, you go to the local beauty salon to get a haircut. Unluckily, one of these hairdressers is a maniac! Write your answer in the comments if you can guess who! It's the second hairdresser. The fire haircut technique is pretty normal these days, but he's also hiding an axe in his pocket, which is far from normal. Busted! Your haircut is done, and now it's time to chat with your buddies. They send you some selfies. Sally is getting ready to skydive. Bobby is taking a yoga class. And Caleb is riding an ATV through a desert. Who's least likely to survive? Give this video a thumbs up if you already know the answer. Although Bobby is twisted in an incredible position, his teacher is watching his back. Scorpions are no threat to Caleb unless he gets out of his vehicle. But take a look at Sally's picture. There's lightning in the sky. It's not safe to skydive in a thunderstorm. You're walking in the jungle and find three banana palms. One of them is poisonous. Can you guess which one? Okay, the first stack looks bad at first glance because its bananas have turned dark, but it doesn't mean that they're poisonous. The third palm has the fewest bananas, so probably many people were eager to eat them. But take a look under the second palm. Someone picked a banana, took a bite, and then just dropped it on the ground. That's suspicious. So, this is the dangerous palm. But if you have a different opinion, please let us know in the comments. In the evening, you go to the local carnival. Three ladies want to dance with you, but unfortunately, only one of them is a safe partner. Can you guess who's dangerous? Think carefully, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Although the first lady is wearing a cute rabbit mask, she's a thief. She's sneaking a phone from a guy in the crowd. Take a closer look at the third lady. A broken glass bottle sticks out of her pocket. It's not very safe to dance around her. Thus, only the second lady is safe. There are three routes you can take. The first path is covered with hot coals. The second with gross worms and toads. The third one with beautiful roses. Which path would you choose? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Hot coals can burn through your shoes and rose thorns can scratch your skin. So the second path is the best option. These creatures are no threat to humans. These two chefs cook over an open fire. One of them is in serious danger. If you already know who, hurry up to be the first to share it in the comments. Well, well, take a closer look at the first chef. His scarf is already smoking. It's about to burst into flames. 
fire alarm. The next day, you go for a walk on the beach. There is an open shower on the shore. You spot three guys washing off the sand after swimming in the sea. Whom will you save? The third guy is in danger. Take a look at the bottle he's using to wash his hair. It says bleach. Bad idea, buddy. Hit the like button if you nailed it. Here's Hudson. He's a college teacher. It's the last day of the semester, so he has a bunch of paperwork in his office. Suddenly, someone turns off the electricity in the entire building. Hudson goes to the basement with generators. There he sees a turned-off switch and three people standing next to it. They all say they didn't touch anything, but one of them is lying. The janitor says, the lights went out when I came here to clean up. Rebecca says, I'm a new student. I got lost in the corridors and accidentally got here. And Nick says, I'm a last year graduate. I came here to find a toy owl, a souvenir I had hidden here many years ago. Who's lying? The janitor has a bucket and a mop, so he's not lying. There's a toy owl in the corner of the room, so Nick is telling the truth. Rebecca is lying. It's the end of the semester, so she can't be new at this time. One of Hudson's students, Paul, has a crush on another student named Liza. Once he got a note from her saying she liked him. So Paul decides to write her back and ask her out. Unfortunately, he doesn't remember which desk is Liza's. There are two possibilities. Can you guess which desk is the one he needs? If you remember, the note was written in green ink. There's a similar green pen lying on the desk on the right. So this is most likely Liza's desk. After classes, Hudson is leaving the building and faces a group of his students. They ask him to take their picture. Can you spot an odd detail in the resulting shot? This guy here has three hands. Liza and Paul are having fun outside during their winter break. Liza is learning how to skate on the lake, and Paul is skiing in the forest. Who's not smart? Liza. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. Unlucky Liza. Paul, meanwhile, returns to the dorm. He's starving. So he opens the fridge that he shares with his roommate Nick. Right away, Paul begins to yell at his roommate. Nick, you stole my food again! Nick replies, you're a liar, I didn't. Paul says, well, I have proof. I took a picture of our fridge before leaving. Can you tell who's lying by just looking at these two images? Take a closer look. The shelves are signed. These two shelves are Nick's and the other two Paul's. These three items disappeared from Paul's shelves. This means that the liar is Nick and it's time for a new roommate. Meanwhile, Liza and Paul are having a date tonight. Apparently, the lady on the lake survived the cracking ice. But Liza's dorm is situated on the opposite side of this maze. Can you help Paul pass through this labyrinth to meet his date? Here is the only way out. The college dean, Nina, hires a handyman to transform the area around the campus. That's what she says. Your task is to put seven benches. I will triple your paycheck if you find a way to put exactly six rows of benches in a straight line. Also, each row should have three benches in particular. Can you help the handyman accomplish this task?
he should put three benches as the vertices of an equal triangle. Three more benches should be put at the center of each side of triangle. And the last bench should be at the center. The handyman gets to work and goes to the storage room to grab some tools. Can you find two identical items? Hey, here they are! The handyman is bored, so he starts a quiz game. He keeps asking the same question to every student he meets. But each time, the answer is different. Can you guess the question? The handyman's question is, how are you doing? Hudson's teenage daughter, Jill, failed a test. So he makes her stay at home and study instead of going to a friend's birthday party. Meanwhile, Nina's teenage daughter, Jules, got sick. So she spends the entire day in her bedroom instead of going to the movies. Both daughters come down to dinner at 7 o'clock. Which parent was deceived? Nina. Take a look at the window. It's raining heavily. Jules has wet hair and dirty water on the edges of her jeans. It means she was outside. Uh Uh-oh. Liar. The next morning, Hudson and Nina both wake up earlier to prepare breakfast for their families. Nina is making sandwiches. Meanwhile, Hudson is making eggs with bacon. Who's wrong? Hudson, oops, he forgot to turn on the stove. Hudson is walking to work through his favorite park and sees this scene. Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? There are two suns in the sky. Uh Uh-oh, Tatooine. Hudson arrives at his class and starts with a witty riddle. Can you tell me which part of London exists in France as well? The correct answer is the letter N. A huge drama is taking place in a diner next to the college campus. The owner of this place screams, where's my money? It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear that they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no customers today. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees trying to spot the thief. Liza is wearing a pair of stylish sunglasses and brandy clothes. Mike is also wearing some costly designer clothes and an expensive phone. Robin is wearing a regular dress and fake jewelry. Who took the money? Nobody. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says, open. That means that people on the street saw the closed sign on the other side. That's why nobody entered and the cash register remained empty. Hudson finds a secret hallway in the basement of the college building. He decides to explore it and finds an old treasure chest. But as soon as he touches it, three zombie pirates come out and grab him. One of them says, Hey, we've been protecting this gold for 500 years. You can't take it. Hudson notices that something's wrong with these guys. Can you figure out what exactly? Well, they seem fake. This zombie is wearing sneakers. The second one has a phone in his pocket. And the third zombie has a price tag attached to his saber. (laughs) Ah, busted! Molly is very nervous. She met a great guy online, and today they're having their first offline date. They have never seen the pictures of each other. Their date will take place in an old part of the campus at night. 
Molly arrives at the meeting point and sees two guys. The first one says, It's a weird place for a date, but I'm glad to see you. And the second guy says, It's me! I couldn't wait to see you! You're even more pretty than your photos. One of them is Molly's date, while the other one, a dangerous criminal. Can you guess who is who? It's the second guy who is dangerous. He mentioned photos, but Molly didn't send her online crush any pictures of herself. Therefore, the first guy is her date. Molly and her date want to go to a local nightclub. But the guard can't let them in without a password. He gives the guys a hint. The more places I go, the less you can see. Who am I? Darkness is the password. It's a beautiful weekend day. Nina is working in her garden. Suddenly, someone attacks her from behind and she faints. Later that day, she gets better and talks to the police. Nina suspects one of her neighbors. Some of them don't really like her. Officers question three suspects. Bill says, I've been planting trees with my daughter all day long. Sabrina says, I was just peacefully watering my gorgeous flowers and continued to do so. Luke says, I rarely leave my house, so I don't even know this woman. Who's suspicious? Sabrina's garden hose isn't even connected to the water source. It's just lying on the ground. Therefore, her story is fake. Lost Inheritance Larry's granddad was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why, when he passed away, no one could find his will. But one day, five years later, Larry was looking through some old papers. Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding was his granddad's will. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 2 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will be my heir. Larry was ecstatic. He was going to be rich. He drove to his granddad's villa and found the cherry tree. He waited for an hour or so until 2 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since the granddad hid his valuables. The tree has grown taller, and its shadow has become longer, too. A smart investigator. A man living in a small village in the mountains got his goat stolen. He was sure one of his neighbors was behind this crime. The head of the village invited four suspects and said, I'm going to give each of you a magic stick. Bring them to me in the morning. By that time, the thief's stick will have grown by 5 inches. The next day, the head of the village examined the suspect's stick. He immediately knew who had taken the goat. How? The thief's stick was 5 inches shorter than those of the rest. He had broken it expecting it to grow longer during the night. A realization. Three friends fell asleep under a tree in the countryside. While they were resting, a boy painted mustaches on their faces. Once the men woke up, they started to laugh. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped. Why? At first, they saw the mustaches on their friends' faces and found it funny. But then, they realized their friends were laughing too. 
It meant they had mustaches on their faces as well. An apple riddle Eric was locked in a room with 19 other people. Each of them could see the entire room and all the people inside without turning their head or body or moving in any other way. To get out of the room, Eric had to place an apple in such a way that everyone but one person could see it. The guy managed to do it. How? He put the apple on one person's head. A weird choice. Every day, Mark rides his bike to the railway station to get to the college. There are two stops near his home. One, one mile away from his house, and the other, two miles away in the opposite direction. In the morning, he always gets on the train at the first stop. And in the afternoon, he gets off at the second. Why? Mark's home and the stations are on the hill. And this method allows the guy to ride his bike down without any effort. A draw. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of them scored two goals in total. And still, it wasn't a tie since one team won and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Time travel. An inventor has created a time machine. He's packed enough food, water, and other necessities and is now ready to test his invention. He sets the timer to go 500 years back into the past. The man is about to press the start button when a thought comes to his mind. He slaps his forehead, takes the time machine and his supplies, and goes downstairs. What for? This way, he'll avoid a nasty fall. Multi-story buildings were rare five centuries ago. A money problem. A notorious criminal caught rich businessman Brian and locked him in a room. I won't let you go until you double the money I leave for you. And the criminal put 5,000 bucks on the table. By the time he returned, Brian had already doubled the money. He hadn't left the room or communicated with anyone. Then how did he do it? He put the money in front of the mirror. Granted wishes. Amanda was walking along the beach one day and found a glass bottle. The thing looked ancient, and the girl had to put a lot of effort into opening it. To her shock, guess what? A genie appeared from the bottle. I'll grant you three wishes, but there's one condition. You can't wish for more wishes. Amanda agreed and still managed to get more wishes. How did she do it? She started with wishing that the genie allowed her to ask for more wishes. Strange reaction. Two British women wanted to lose weight. They went to the gym, ate healthily, and drank a lot of water. In two weeks, both of them lost 10 pounds. But one woman was happy and the other upset. Why? The first woman lost weight, and the second, 10 pounds in UK money. 11. How did she survive? Melissa stayed late at work one evening. When she was walking home, it was already dark. 
Suddenly, she noticed a group of people. They were moving in a strange, jerky way, closer and closer. With growing horror, Melissa realized the approaching people were actually zombies. In a moment, she got surrounded. Then, darkness. And still, the next day, the girl was in the kitchen, making herself a vegetable salad. How is it possible? Look at the date. It's November 1st. It was Halloween the day before, and zombies were just some dressed-up guys. Beach Volleyball Andrew and his friend Kenneth went to the beach to have some fun. Andrew started to play volleyball with Gary, a guy they met there. After the game was over, Andrew went to a beach bar and ordered a lemonade. But after drinking it, he almost immediately felt sick and lost consciousness. Kenneth called an ambulance and his friend was taken to a hospital. There it was discovered Andrew had been poisoned. The police questioned the suspects. Kenneth said, I'm sure the barman put something in Andrew's drink. The barman exclaimed, Why would I poison my customer? It was probably the guy he played volleyball with. He lost the game and wanted to get revenge. Gary said, After we finished playing, I went to swim in the sea. I didn't even notice Andrew had been taken away. Who poisoned Andrew? It was the barman. He lied about Gary losing the game to frame the guy. A teacher's riddle. A student had failed his test and came to his teacher asking how he could improve his marks. The teacher replied, If you manage to solve my riddle, I'll give you a better mark. You have a cardboard box. It's easier to lift from a wooden floor than from a steel table. What's in the box? (laughs) The student thought for a while and answered correctly. What did he say? The box is filled with magnets. A missing model. Ashley was a popular fashion model. On Friday, she had to open a show. But 10 minutes before the event, she vanished. Several witnesses claimed the girl had been taken away in a black car. The police questioned four suspects. Betty, Ashley's colleague, said, I felt sleepy before the show. I made myself a cup of coffee and was drinking it when Ashley disappeared. Kevin, the manager, told the detective some equipment had been broken. He was trying to solve this problem. Paul, the hairstylist, explained that he had been refreshing the model's makeup. And Donna, the designer, said she had only come several minutes before the show. Who was behind Ashley's disappearance? It's Paul. He's a hairstylist, and they don't deal with makeup. Plus, there are no beauty products at his station. In disguise, a feared criminal managed to escape from the police. He got a job in a wealthy mansion. When the detectives arrived there, they found out three men had been hired recently. They questioned each of them. Michael, the cook, told the police he had been working in a restaurant before. But then the restaurant went out of business and he found a new job. John, the gardener, answered he had always been interested in plants. After finishing garden design courses, he landed this job. Robert, the security guard, said his father was the house owner's friend. He helped Robert to get his position. Who's the criminal? It's the cook. Before the police came, he'd been trying to make an omelet. But look, it's full of eggshells. A real cook would never make such a mistake. A train mystery. 
is something that comes with a train, leaves with a train, but is no use to a train. And yet, no train can go without it. What is it? It's noise. Yeah, really. You're taken into a dark cave. Your mission is to escape without getting caught. Four different colored doors appear in front of you. A red one leads to an outer galaxy without a trace of oxygen. A yellow door leads you to a great white shark-infested water tank. A blue one leads to 66 million years ago, the time when a massive asteroid hit the Earth and made dinosaurs go extinct. And a purple door leads to a beautiful island filled with beaches and delicious food. On the wall, there's only one clue. It reads, pick the door that's not a primary color. You've got 10 seconds to open the right door. It's the purple door. Red, yellow, and blue are all primary colors, while purple is secondary. Plus, don't forget there's beaches and delicious food. You've managed to escape, and now you're transported to the beautiful island. You find a citizen in need. He tells you his brother had been taken by an evil mathematician, and the only way to escape is to solve his riddle. You rush to the scene and arrive at precisely 3 p.m. There, the mathematician greets you with an angry look and a tricky riddle. If you calculate the height of my tower, you and my prisoner are free to go. If you fail, you'll stay here forever. I offer you three calculation methods to choose from. Multiple long sticks, your shadow, or the long rope hanging from the tower. I give you nine seconds. Without even knowing the measurements of the sticks or the length of the rope, even if they're the same height as the tower, you'd still not know the actual size of the building. The best option is your shadow. Knowing your height, you can compare how many times your shadow fits into the tower's shadow. Add them together, and you've just found the right answer. Now that you're safe and sound, you go to your hotel to get some rest. That's when the restaurant manager calls you for help. He left the dinner service, and his staff member said everything was quiet, so they closed up early. Before shutting down the restaurant, the manager asked them to send him a photo of the deserted restaurant. Uh, This is the photo I received. Everything seems empty, and it appears my staff members are truthful. But something seems off. Can you help me figure it out? You've got 8 seconds. It appears the image was photoshopped. The employees removed the people from the picture, but they forgot to erase someone's hand from the table. Right before walking upstairs to your room, the HR manager calls you into her office. She needs help with the job application she received for the receptionist position. She's looking for someone who is multilingual and narrowed it down to three applicants. But only one person is telling the truth. Sarah is from Belgium, and she speaks Dutch. Louise is from Switzerland, and she speaks Swedish. Marie is from Monte Carlo and speaks Italian. You've got 7 seconds to figure out who is truthful. It's Sarah. In Belgium, they do speak Dutch, French, and German. In Switzerland, they mainly speak German. And in Monte Carlo, French. Time to go to your room and get some rest. But uh uh-oh, the elevator you entered is a trap. It takes you to the hotel's basement, where three doors appear in front of you. The first door takes you to the Amazon rainforest, with green anacondas, electric eels, and poison dart frogs. 
The second takes you to the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the largest and most potent current globally. The third takes you to the top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. It's the tallest mountain and largest volcano in the world that goes below sea level. Only one of them takes you to a safe place. Which one? You've got six seconds. Pick the third door. Mauna Kea is a dormant volcano, and it stopped erupting hundreds of thousands of years ago. So you're safe. You've made it out of the shady cave and you need to go to your room. As soon as you enter, the lights go off and you hear bars lowering to the floor and huge chains shaking. You use your arms to navigate around and come across dots on the wooden floor. You run your fingers through them. It's Braille and it reads, One of the three magic mushrooms on this table will help you leave this place. Pick wisely. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in this dark room forever. The mushrooms on the left will make you super strong and provides healing powers. The one in the middle will bring the electricity back and you'll be able to see. The one on the right will make you small and invisible. You've got 5 seconds to pick the right mushroom. Turning the lights on won't free you. And becoming invisible doesn't mean you won't bump into walls. The best option is the strength and healing mushroom. You can bang on the walls and bars until you break them. The next day rolls around. You head into the parking lot to pick up your car. But the car seems to be locked. There's a three-digit PIN code lock on the passenger side door. On the side of the device, you read a clue. ABC equals 123. On the ground, there's a piece of paper that reads BAD. Use the clue to find pin code numbers. Here are your four seconds. The code is 214. B is the second letter, A is the first, and D is the fourth. Now that you've got your car, time to do some shopping at the mall. You visit a jewelry shop. You discover it has a mysterious extension leading to a room filled with gold coins, diamonds, and other expensive metals. As soon as the owner spots you, he traps you in the room and locks the door. Nice shop. He tells you there's only one way to survive in that dark chamber. You must eat one muffin. If you eat the wrong one, you won't make it. But if you pick the right one, you'll be free to go. The first muffin turns you into moss. The second one turns you into a badger. The third muffin will turn you into a snake. Three seconds. Moss can't survive without the sun for long, and snakes need the sun to regulate their body's temperature. The correct answer is the muffin that turns you into a badger. These creatures spend long periods in the dark. The mayor of the town calls you into his office. He politely ignores the fact that you are now a badger. He says that something mysterious is going on inside one of the town's restaurants. Everyone has turned into a zombie. Only one human is left in the bar, and you must save them. But first, you have to identify them. You're shown a photo with three people. Only one of them is human. You've got three seconds. It's the lady on the right. It looks like the red spot on her shirt came from her hot dog. The lady on the left is missing part of her ear. Now the mayor takes you to the local school. The principal needs to decide which of the students deserves to go to space camp next summer. She picked all the students that got A's on their report cards and gave each of them a bean. She said, the person who will return with the tallest bean plant will win the prize. But you can't cheat. All kids came back with large plant pots and bean plants filled with smaller beans. Only one girl returned with a plant pot filled with soil. As soon as the principal saw her pot, he gave her the prize. Why? Here are your three seconds. 
The teacher gave them cold, cooked beans. They couldn't have sprouted unless the students cheated. And these guys all got A's, huh? Makes you wonder. The mayor takes you with him on an investigation. A man named Martin had finished his veggie garden and invited his friends over for a party. Then his wife vanished. He called detectives, and there are three suspects in front of you. Steve said he was looking at the cherry tomatoes and picked one to try it. Donna said she was checking out the little squashes that had started growing. Martin said he was taking professional pictures of the flowers for his blog. You've got two seconds to determine who's lying. It's Martin. This was a veggie garden. It didn't have any flowers. Time for your last test. You're walking into an underground tomb. You must retrieve the treasure and make it out alive. As you walk deeper and deeper into the tomb, you come across a mysterious creature. He says, You must correctly answer my riddle. If you do, the treasure is yours. If you don't, you'll disappear forever. I'm not alive, but I can grow. I don't have lungs, but I need air to breathe. If water touches me, I cease to exist. What am I? Two seconds. The answer is fire. You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom, but you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then, remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. And Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. 
The second, a big, burly, tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So, who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying? It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school, and the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens, so she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. So what should Claire do? Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do?
Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. It worked! And just in time! Whew. The next day, Claire has a big calculus exam. But funny enough, all the students in the class refuse to take it. Professor Miller can expel only one student for skipping the test. All of them know each other's names. If a student knows they'll be expelled, they agree to take the test. How can the professor make all the students take it? She should tell them she'll expel the student whose name comes first alphabetically. Then this person won't skip the test. The next person on the list won't skip either, and so on until the end of the list. The next day, class isn't any easier. Professor Miller grabs her cup of coffee, takes a sip, goes to set it down, and what's this? It's stuck to her hand! Somebody put glue on the cup, and she's got three suspects. Look carefully to find out which student is playing tricks on the professor. Sure, the first student has an awfully guilt-ridden look on his face. And the second student's smile looks just like pride for a job well done. But look closer at the third student's pocket. Yep, it's the tip of a glue bottle. Professor Miller is so annoyed by her class's shenanigans, she decides to change her career. Wow. She opens a shoe factory. She's so successful that she builds a second one in another city. But despite her success, the problems don't end. Her employees keep secretly taking shoes from the plant. What can she do to resolve the issue? Have one of her factories start making only left shoes and the other only right ones. One of those shoe swipers is driving a semi-truck full of shoes to sell for a profit. He comes to a tunnel and there's a major problem. His truck is just an inch too tall. But he can still drive through the tunnel. How? Let some of the air out of the tires. It'll lower the truck just enough. When the shoe swiper gets through the tunnel, he comes to a fork in the road. One goes to the town, the other to never-ending wilderness. There are guides standing at each. The catch? One always tells the truth, the other always lies. The driver doesn't know who's who, and he's only allowed one question. What should he ask to find out which road goes to town? Ask either one of the guides which road the other would say is the right way. Then he must choose the opposite. The truth teller knows the other will lie, so they'll point the driver toward the road to nowhere. If he asks the liar, they'll know the other guard would honestly point him toward the town. So they'll, again, recommend the road to nowhere. The shoe thief takes the road to town, but he has another puzzle to answer before he's allowed to enter. The guard at the gate asks him one simple question. What's the logic in the order of the following words? Fun, blue, be, more, and dive. Every word rhymes with its number on the list. Fun 1, blue 2, B3, and so on. The shoe swiper finally settles down in this new town. Too bad for him, he can only use a payphone to make calls. One day, the phone breaks. He informs the phone company, but they do nothing. He tries again the next day. Same result. The third time, he finally gets them to come out and fix the phone. So what did he say? He claimed that people were making calls without paying. 